All right, this tutorial is going to be in two parts. We are going to use a pre-rigged uh, character. This is called Johnny the Box. Um, it's found on high-end 3D. It was created by Ravine Rajadore. Hopefully I pronounced that probably not even close to correct, but it's really great. Uh, it's a great little rig for a box character with some facial features. Um, so it's really awesome because it has squash and stretch really awesomely set up on it. Um, this controller here can do like these movements and these can all be separately animated and then this larger uh, controller here does the overall movement and then also very uh, coolly is that a word uh, you can also there are controllers for like the eyebrows and if you move them left and right they actually rotate uh, and then eye movements and eye shapes as well which can all be separately uh, controlled and so it's a really cool rig um, what I've done is I have put a UV map on this um, I've, I've UV mapped it so that you can place um, a mouth that is created in flash now both of these files that you'll need are below so this is I've called this one lip sync cube with eyes uh, and that one already has the um, UV editor on that so if I go into the outliner I look at the body I've already uh, taken the UV map and flatten it out and then I saved that I exported that UV map and brought it into flash so I have this file in here that is called 2d lip sync mouth and in this one I have created uh, this is in flash or Adobe animate it should work in both and in this one I've created a symbol this symbol is called mouth you can see it here in the libraries and if you double click on it you can see that I have created a different mouth for each of the nine mouths that you'll find in this reference. Now this is, uh, this can be found online, these are nine mouths. Um, the letters under them represent the sounds that each of those mouths do. There are a couple of sounds that are missing so you can always add additional mouths or just use one of the pre-existing ones. But I've taken them and I've put each of these in a frame in this graphic. So this is frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you can see here in the a uh, graphic here that that's frame one then in frame two I drew the next one in frame three the next one and this is all in this graphic which means when I go back to this graphic I can actually choose its attribute in the properties if I click on this mouth symbol and I go to looping if I set it to single frame I can actually type in a number here and it'll take me to that frame which is that mouth and so in this way I can just use a single symbol and repeat these mouths and I can say okay in this one I want nine which I'll show you shortly and use it and in this flash file or this animate file what I did was I imported that UV template that I've made so this is going to go onto that rigged box um, from high-end 3D um, this is where the eyes will be and anything that I draw on this will transfer to that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an animated uh, sequence of images and then bring that image sequence into Maya so that it'll play that animation now I've created this uh, this graphic symbol very small anything inside of this box will appear on the front of the face um, and then all of the sides what what this will turn out to be is anything drawn on here will be on the right side of the face this is the left side this is the top this is the bottom and this box here is the back and it's just a box that's been laid out flat so that we can apply a two-dimensional texture to it and in this case we're going to apply a two-dimensional animation to it um, the way this will work is I need to import a sound now importing sound into flash is a major pain it has to be a 16-bit uh, file. It should also be a WAV file because when I bring this uh, audio file into Maya, Maya requires WAV files. It doesn't accept MP3s. Um, and so a 16-bit uh, WAV file is preferred. Um, that way it'll work all the way through the system and you can use uh, Audacity or Audition to convert the file and to change the, the bit depth of it to get it to be 16-bit. So I'm going to bring in a file here and I've got a series of audio files that I've already uh, transferred. Um, there are a couple of ways that I can import an audio file into Flash or, or Animate. I keep saying both. I can come here to File and Import and then choose Import to Library, which is the second option, which is off of my screen right now. 
or even easier, I have my library tab here. I can just drag the file into here and it will import it automatically if the format is all correct and everything. If you get an error, it's probably because it's a 32-bit audio file. Most are. I had to convert a lot of things to make this work. Um, if everything's worked correctly, I can now click on this file here in the library. I can see the waveform. I can play it. All I want is to earn your respect, Frank. How can I... So it's a scene from a Hot Rod, a very funny movie. Um, and now I can lip sync the mouths to this audio. The first step is bringing the audio into my animation and whenever I do an audio track I always want it to be separate from any uh, animation uh, layers so I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'll go ahead and call it audio. It doesn't matter if it's above or below because it's not going to have any images in it and now I'm going to pick up this audio track from the library and drag it onto the stage making sure that my audio layer is the one that's currently selected um, a good way to keep uh, make sure that happens is to lock all the layers that aren't the audio layer and when I drag it in uh, it kinda looks like nothing's happened all you'll see is a single orange line here that's the waveform of the audio but right now we're only looking at a single frame of it 1 24th of a second of this audio it's not enough to see it so I want to extend everything out I'm going to extend this template layer so that I can continue to see the box lines I'm also going to extend the lips because uh, it's not going to make any difference. So the way I can extend all of these layers, there's two ways. I can drag down and have all of them selected, or if I'm clicked on none of them, if I just click down here on none of them and press F5, that will extend that keyframe. So I'm going to hold down F5 and extend it until I run out of waveform, until my orange disappears. And uh, the, remember that each of these uh, numbers represents a frame, so 24 frames per second. This is a second's worth of audio. 48 would be two seconds. So you may have to hold F5 for a while. Now I also need to uh, change the way that uh, Animate deals with this audio track. Right now it's probably keeping it as an event. So if I click on anywhere in this audio, I just click anywhere on that audio track and go back to the properties I will see the properties for my sound it may be minimized you may have to maximize it here you'll see the name of the audio track and I need to change the stream from event which is more of a programming term it just means when it loads up it'll start playing it with no regard to frame rate um, it won't keep it tied to the frames I need to change that to stream and if I've done everything correctly, when I drag my timeline indicator, I should be able to hear the individual air quote frames of audio. Now I'm done with that audio layer, I can lock it. Now if I want to hear it in real time, I can always just hit enter to play it. I want us to earn your respect. And now I can go through and start to do my animation. Now the reason why I extended the lips layer is because now I can unlock that lips layer. I'm going to create a new keyframe whenever I want a different mouth. And using uh, my cycle as a reference, so I'm starting with a closed mouth here, that's frame 8. I'm going to click on that symbol that I created and tell it to show it frame 8 from that symbol. That's my closed mouth. And the process is this. I'm going to move forward until I hear the mouth change. Oh. So right here he starts to say all. Oh. I'm going to click on that frame and press F6. The reason why I'm pressing F6 is because I want a new keyframe but I also want it to copy what was in the previous keyframe into this one which is my mouth symbol. If I've done everything correctly I should now have a keyframe symbol which is that dark circle there and I should have a new mouth here. Because it's a new keyframe I can change this mouth and it won't change the earlier one. So I'm gonna go to all, I'm gonna do A which is my first mouth here so I'm gonna come here and I can even drag with uh, underlined yellow text in Flash and Animate. I can drag it to go to the different mouths, or I can click on it and actually just change the number. So if I change it to frame 1, that doesn't change the earlier frame, which is still on frame 8 of that graphic. And I can do that. So the process is just this. So I'll listen for the sound. So now I'm saying an ol right here. So I can only go forward a single frame before I made a change. I'll click on that frame, press F6 click on my graphic and change it to the L mouth, which is 6. So I'll come here and press 6. Here's where he starts to say I, so I'm going to press F6 there again on frame 6 in my case, create a new keyframe and change it to the sound that I want, which I'll change it to 3. 
Siri starts to say want, so I'm going to press F6 again at that point in my timeline, which creates a new keyframe, which means I can now change my mouth again. And I got a W, uh, which is number one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna change it to number four. And I'm just gonna keep doing this throughout my entire sequence. I'm creating a 2D lip sync to this. So F6, that would be an A, which is one, if I remember correctly. And he talks really fast here. You'll notice that sometimes people talk faster than a 24th of a second. As long as you're close with your uh, lip syncing, it's going to look great. As long as your mouth is moving and changing as uh, the sounds are being produced, it will look awesome. I'm going to go here, hit F6, uh, maybe do the number five. So I have to click on the mouth every time so I get the properties for the mouth. And then in looping, I'll just pick the single one. And you want to make sure that it's on single frame. Um, otherwise, it'll just loop through the animation inside of there, too. So I'm going to pause it and go a little further here. And then I'll come back and explain more. Okay, I'm back, and so you can see that there's a variety of times when I, I, I'm not doing every single frame or every other frame. I could if I wanted to add more detail. I could even draw additional in-between mouths or anything else I wanted to to, to smooth it out. Um, but very quickly, I made this, and every time I just went forward, I listened for the new sound. Whenever I thought the mouth should change, I pressed F6 to create a new keyframe, and I changed the mouth by clicking on it and changing um, which frame it was on. Um, so if I watch this now, if I come back to the beginning and I maybe turn it down a little bit and listen to it. All I want is to earn your respect, Frank. How can I do that if you won't fight me? I'm feeling pretty good about that. So now um, I'm going to now have to bring this back into Maya. But before I do that, uh, this template layer, this gray and white that Maya makes so that I know where to draw things when I flattened out that box, I don't want it to be gray when I bring it back in. I want it to be a different color. So I could come in with a brush and color, uh, I maybe make a new layer. And um, I still have that template just so I know where it is. But I could color in a bunch of different things. If I want to just change the entire color of the box, I could even just say I want it like just a blue box. I could come here with my rectangle tool, choose the color I want. And as long as the entire area that was the box shape on the template is covered, then anything that's inside of there, inside of this area, will be inside of the box. Anything out here won't actually show up because it's outside of the UV map. And so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. I'll redo that rectangle. So now my whole mouth will be blue, except for the part where, I mean, the whole box will be blue, except for where the mouth is. Now, I've gotten that. I need to export this into something that Maya will recognize. And the easiest way to do that is to export a, uh, an image sequence. So if I come up here to File and I choose Export, and of course it's off of the screen again, uh, the second option is called Export Movie. And what I'm going to create is a sequence. So under Save as Type, there are several different sequences depending on what kind of file you want. If you want to maintain transparencies of any kind, you could use a ping. Uh, GIFs or JPEGs. Honestly, probably uh, I'm just going to stick with a GIF or a JPEG sequence. And the sequence is going to create a bunch of still images for every single frame, depending on which one you pick a JPEG, a bunch of JPEGs, a bunch of GIFs, a bunch of ping files. Um, so you want to make sure that wherever you save this, I'm just saving it to the desktop for now, that you'll put it in a folder, otherwise your desktop or your documents folder or wherever you're saving this is going to be full of images that you are going to have to move around. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'll call this uh, maybe lip sequence. And inside of there, I'm just going to name the file because it's going to name a bunch of files uh, numerically. It's going to add some numbers at the end of them. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want the file name itself to be very simple with no numbers. And so I will call it, uh, I'll just call it lips. And when I save, um, the default resolution, I, I made this maybe a little too big. I'm going to shrink the resolution down to 72. Um, 2048 by 2048 should be fine. Maybe I'll update that in the file too. But it, this should match up perfectly with the UV map that I created on the block. And so when I click OK, that's going to start to export a bunch of images into that folder. 
And when I go and look at this, this is the folder now. And inside of there, if I look at the details, you'll see that it's just a bunch of images, all named lips, and then uh, it's got a little bit of a buffer here, so it's 0001, then 2, then 3, then 4, all the way down to my last frame, which was frame 94 in my case. And I can, if I double click on those, you can even see that they're actually just a bunch of still images of it. If I click through them, you can see that each one is a frame. And that is what we're going to bring into Maya, which I will continue on the second part of this tutorial. So this should be covering everything that we've done two-dimensionally. Now we're going to bring it into that um, pre-rigged box in Maya.